This is Changemakers with Katie Gore, finding the right solutions for the affordable housing community. Thanks for joining me once again for my talk with Changemaker Tony Kembro, the CEO of VEO, the Veterans Empowerment Organization, the largest nonprofit in Georgia providing direct services to military veterans in need. Tony, we've discussed the work that you're doing to help house our heroes, but we all know it takes a village. So who are some of your valued partners? Yeah, so um, we've, we've had a long relationship with United Way. Um, so from a, from a referral source, sources, we use United Way. We use Fort McPherson, their continual care program, uh, the VA. Uh, other shelters within the area, Mary Hall Freedom House, Gateway, Land and Missions, as our um, as our referral sources to get veterans into our program, uh, and and veterans will find us on Google and come in off the street from from a housing standpoint. Uh, from our mental health, uh, we work with uh, Emory Healthcare. We work with the Shepherd Center. Uh, we're partnering with uh, Operation Headstrong. Um, which is they provide mental health services. Uh, we work with the recovery zone uh, for recovery services and for uh, substance abuse services uh, as our kind of as our uh, our partners around uh, substance abuse. Uh, we work with Warrior Set Free because we feel that you need the full gamut of when we're talking about wellness, and so they provide a lot of our wellness, uh, our spiritual wellness support for our veterans because uh, we look at this holistically. And so Warrior Set Free is one of our major partners when it comes to spiritual wellness, as well as local churches in the area. Uh, when veterans say that they, they raise their hand and say they want that to be a part of their, their journey. Uh, we partner with uh, various organizations when it comes to uh, workforce development. Uh, what we decided to do was not create our own workforce program and say, hey, we want everyone to be culinary or get a CDL or these different things. And so we have a full gamut of partners out there where we can provide, whether it's mechanical training or CDL or cybersecurity or just restaurant management. So our workforce development will allows them to pick a field and an opportunity uh, in a company that they would like to work for. And we are able to really get them job placement or internships into various industries just because we have a variety of networks that we can plug a veteran into based off of their skill set and their desire to work. And so uh, those are really how we go about doing it. It's really through more partnerships. And our focus has been really around being really solid on the housing side of the house, be the export of the housing and, uh, and then utilizing the partner network within Atlanta to deliver quality uh, and intentional service back to our veterans. Speaking of Atlanta specifically here, do you work with the Atlanta Housing Authority and the VASH program? Are there specific successes or do you think there's some program overhauls or recommendations that you're seeing from an (laughs) operator's point of view? I think there's always room for improvement. When you're dealing with, um, you know, the federal government, if you want to say the bureaucracy that's there, um, there's nonprofits and for-profits can be a lot more innovative and creative a lot faster than our federal government can be. Um, you know, there takes a lot to change process and procedures on the government side. And so, you know, being respectful to that, understanding, you know, that, yes, there's there's ways that uh, each of those programs could be a whole lot more effective in how they, you know, run their program, how they work with either landowners or but also the participants, how we can quickly identify uh, folks in need and get them their vouchers uh, that they need as quickly as we possibly can. Um, When you're the the wait list to get a HUD VAS voucher uh, can take months for for a veteran um, that's looking for a HUD VAS voucher. uh, And the amount of vouchers that the city of Atlanta or uh, that they have, uh, quite frankly, is just not enough for the city. Uh, and then you have other parts of Atlanta or counties that are only using, utilizing half of their, their vouchers. So there's got to be a mechanism where these vouchers can quickly be uh, dispersed and utilized based off of uh, need versus based off of just saying, hey, you have X amount of vouchers um, because you're this county 
we need to look at this a little bit differently around, hey, where's the need? And then how do we get that voucher to to the person in need versus it's dedicated to a county or to a city or to the state? I find that it's, it's a lot easier to go through the DCA, the Department of Community Affairs for Georgia, to get a HUD bash voucher, less red tape, um, and a little bit easier to, to move along than it is, um, I hate to say, with the city of Atlanta. Um, and so we've utilized a lot more of their vouchers than actually the city of Atlanta just due to that. But I also think that there needs to be a lot more requirements on us, the nonprofits and the, the landlords um, in this process as well. There has to be a greater accountability to providing high quality living for the participants uh, and nonprofits and landowners and homeowners, uh, landlords um, really need to keep up with their property um, and really need to go above and beyond uh, and not look at it as, hey, I receive a voucher and this person is not really paying and look at them as a really a truly a paying customer uh, and take care of their property so that they feel value in the home that they're living in. Um, and that's, um, you know, some of the things that we are trying to do is when they move in, uh, these places are brand new. They look good, but we're going to maintain them because we want them to feel valued in their space and in their home. And hopefully that that will resonate into their community as well. Are you seeing any developers do new builds that are specifically targeting veterans? We mentioned where you guys have built some new construction, but are you, are you seeing any others? Yeah, locally, uh, Quest is, has been one. Or what you'll see is you'll see a portion of that affordable housing maybe dedicated to some veteran uh, initiatives. So they'll They'll build maybe 120 units and maybe 20 of those will be dedicated to a project-based HUD bash or a voucher program for, for veterans. And so you, you definitely see that uh, as part of uh, their developers are using that because it's, it's a point system, especially when you're looking at getting tax credits and how they're packaging this together. Uh, they're utilizing, uh, you know, that veteran uh, piece to get point systems so that they can build. Uh, but I think... Uh, if we do this correctly, I think you can do that around that. But I also think um, if we can figure out ways to partner with um, organizations like Star C, where they bring an educational component to your housing unit, uh, and we look at this in a robust way, we're, we're going to relieve the burden on our school system uh, as well as we can focus on our veterans um, as, as part of these holistic approaches to when we build affordable housing. Um, bringing that veteran component, bringing that education component to an affordable housing complex or unit uh, will bring a lot of um, value to the community uh, as we look at these developers when they when they do develop and build. Uh, and, and we're starting to see that uh, Zimmerman Properties is one that does that very well. And uh, Quest uh, here in Atlanta do that pretty well. We've been talking about America's heroes deserving a second chance and restoring heroes both of which are your organization's slogans or taglines or mission statements. What is that impact to where you see VEO headed over the next year, five year, 10 years? What is your goal or your vision statement? Yeah, I would say over the next 5, 10, 20 years, our goal is I would love to see one of our program centers in every major city in America uh, where we're helping veterans uh, in transitional and emergency housing and with our own affordable housing in every major uh, city or state in the U.S. Uh, That's, you know, our ultimate goal is to expand this. Uh, We feel if we're, you know, part of the solution Uh, then we can continue to help and bring our wraparound services to veterans, help them navigate uh, their journey to self-sufficiency, but also help them navigate their way to uh, home ownership is, you know, our ultimate goal because we feel that doing that, they would be given back to their community even more and again. Um, And uh, we know that our veteran community is capable of doing this and we just got to wrap our arms around them. When our veterans raise their right hand and pledge, to support and defend the Constitution, they did that with a blank check. Uh, And I think we sometimes forget that as citizens is that um, for every veteran, it looks different. Uh, And their check, um, you know, looks different. And some of them, um, you know, came out of the military unscathed and 
and some of them came out with, um, you know, a lot of war wounds and a lot of wound, wounds, and um, and we and each check is different. And you know, we're here to serve you know, whatever check was they signed and whatever is on that blank check. We're here to help them, whether it's with mental health or substance uh, abuse or um, you know, helping them with legal services or compensation or benefits. Um, we're here to support them wherever that journey is. And so our goal over the next 10, 20 uh, years is to be able to take this nationwide and help our veterans uh, be successful on their individual journey. How can people who are listening help you make that happen? Well, you can visit uh, veohero.org and at the top right hand button, there's a donate button. Uh, and so uh, helping us, uh, whether you want to help us expand and build through capital uh, is, is one way to, you know, to, to give back so that we can build more affordable housing for veterans. Um, you can volunteer uh, your, your, your talents and your energy to, to supporting our veterans, whether if you are a, somebody who has a background in psychiatry or mental health uh, or substance uh, support through AA meetings and things like that. You can volunteer on our campus and, and help our veterans that way. Um, you can hire a veteran uh, and get to understand how they think and, and what they bring to your, to your organization. Uh, begin to, to truly hire them. But not only when you hire them, really look at your HR policies uh, and, and understand when you hire a vet, uh, they might need a little bit more uh, leniency around calling off because they got to get to a VA appointment. And so Having an understanding of those needs uh, is a way that you can get back, not only to us, but to every VSO, uh, veteran service organization out there, by understanding who you're hiring um, and how you're supporting them. Because it takes us all, whether you're a business owner or another organization out there supporting veterans, uh, our community, uh, to really, uh, if we're going to say that our heroes deserve a second chance, our heroes are what represents the best of America, and then, you know, as citizens, then uh, we need to really think about how do we, uh, how we're giving back. And, and when we say thank you for your service, what does that really mean? Do you know what that service was? Do you stop and really have that conversation with that veteran to understand what they gave up? And sometimes looking at them, you don't really know what they gave up to serve this country. And so maybe, you know, just take a moment to and ask them what that service was and have that conversation uh, with that veteran. Um, and so I think those are, those are all ways that you can, you can give back, uh, not only to uh, VEO, but just to our veteran community to help our veterans. That's why I think it's so impactful to have this discussion because there's a clear gap or disconnect between the service that has occurred and homelessness. You know, those two things should not be coexisting. And then when you layer in the ability to purchase a home or afford rent in certain markets, it's almost like the veterans, once they serve, we should be able to hand them a home ownership grant of some type to be able to buy a home, something so basic that should be automatic just in exchange for their service. And yet we fall short that we're even discussing veteran homelessness. Yeah, I, I would I would completely agree with you. I mean, I, I just don't I don't know, um, and it's not to get on politicians, but I don't know how you can sit there and say, you know, thank you for your service and allow our VA health system to be run the way that it's run in, in some communities, how veterans can end up homeless. I know how they get there, um, but how do we support them better? in that effort. We got to do a better job when a veteran gets out in the military. How do we really connect them with civilian opportunities? How do we do that better when they're leaving the military? When a service member joins and when they raise their right hand, they were given a purpose. Uh, they woke up every day with a sense of duty and purpose. Um, and that goes away uh, as soon as they leave the military. And so how do we prepare our veterans better and our, our service men and women better to handle that civilian life when they leave, especially when you take an 18-year-old kid and the way that we recruit it uh, for the military over the last, um, let's call it 20 or so years. I'm going to tell you honestly, we went to urban America and we went to rural America and promised these kids 
that they're going to be able to go around the world and get a college degree and all these different things. And a lot of these kids didn't come from great backgrounds uh, and that was a way out. And so how do we prepare them uh, when they do get out? Because they may not necessarily have the greatest of backgrounds and exposures. How do we prepare them for civilian life? Uh, we train them to be warriors and to, to, to fight an enemy, uh, but we didn't train them and prepare them for what life after the military is going to be, life after a sense of purpose, what that's going to look like. Um, and so we've, we've failed them from a, from a basic uh, training standpoint, but also um, preparing them for life after the military. Uh, and it's, it's, it's systematic. It's, it's happened um, since the beginning of the military. And so we have to really wake up uh, to this uh, and really put forth an effort uh, if we truly want to end uh, homelessness, if we truly want to address mental health, if we truly want to address substance use, we have to recruit better for the military, train better, and, and look at uh, how to truly help a, a service member really exit the military in a way that they can rejoin a civilian life that they never, ever truly experienced. Uh, especially an 18 year old kid who came in, they never really truly experienced what a civilian life looks like because they were told what to do, where to go and when to do it or however long that they spent in the military. And that's not how life is on the civilian side. And so that is a that's a culture shock uh, to the system when they leave. Tony, could you share with us a life changing moment that you've seen when an unhoused veteran moves into their new home yeah i mean we see this every day you know just given an opportunity one that comes to mind um, i won't say the gentleman's name but um, one that comes to mind was a gentleman who literally traveled from from, from texas uh, to atlanta to be in our program um, and when he got there he he said hey I, I just don't trust anybody i heard about you guys and i really don't even trust you guys when we give you a shot and uh, he spent uh, roughly about six to nine months with us. Uh, we were able to partner with one of our local community partners here, City of Refuge. Um, we were able to get him into the Napa program uh, and he really wanted to be a mechanic and to get back into, uh, into that field. And he went and got, I think, 20 different um, certifications, mechanic certifications while he was here. He was able to save up money and get his own housing uh, and it was now working with marta uh, as their one of their uh, mechanics on the, the marta train system making roughly 60k a year so somebody who didn't have anything coming in is now left with um, 60k and and what i find um because with this one we had to it was a lot of tough love we had to tell tell them you know, what we really thought, but not every veteran is like that. And so some need a little tender touch and some needed a, uh, you know, a little kick in the butt. And he was one of that need a little kick in the butt, but he also needed to find that trust in again and be able to trust people and be able to, because he had been let down so many times by either organizations or the VA or whatnot. And so, um, but he found that trust in us. He, he bought in, he leaned into his his program and, you know, left here with a house, living with another veteran, making 60K a year. Uh, and uh, when he had, you know, he came in with nothing on his back on a, on a Greyhound. And so uh, that's, you know, one of those things you probably can, I'm smiling through the phone on this one, just because of how impactful. And we have stories like that where folks have come in here and got jobs at Apple making $120,000 a year. And they didn't. They came in with zero and uh, and left. You know, with a with a job, or working with Crystals as a regional manager, or uh, now managers at one of our hotels uh, downtown. And so, um, and I, our veterans are capable. They just need uh, sometimes they just need an opportunity and somebody to to truly care about their journey. Uh, and once they realize that they uh, somebody's there or helping them along the way that. They, there, it opens the door for them to be, you know, successful. Well, I hear your passion and we know what your vision is. I understand why 
You won the Atlanta Braves Community Heroes Award <laughs> last year. Several of us listening want to now see you take this nationwide because there's clearly such a need and you guys have program parameters to make this successful. So tell us as we wrap up here on the last question, it's one thing to win a Community Heroes <laughs> Award, but how do you now leverage that for your organization? What, what does that mean for you now? Um, <laughs> the ultimate goal is, is really, uh, like you said, leverage it to make an impact for our veteran community. I feel that you shouldn't get an award until you're dead <laughs> because <laughs> I feel like awards happen when you're done. I'm still, we're still on this journey. Uh, and so um, no time for, uh, to stop for, for those things, but I'm appreciative of the thought that went into that. And, uh, but we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of veterans out there that need the hope that we're wanting to provide. And so if we can leverage this into a nationwide program, if we can create thousands of affordable housing, if we can move thousands of veterans into home ownership, um, if we can reduce the rate of uh, suicide that is happening on a daily basis in our in our veteran community, um, then um, in, you know I truly appreciate the the awareness that 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 will bring. Uh, and, but that's the hope um, when that happens is that we bring awareness to what's happening in our society and in our community, and we hope that there's change that comes from that. And so. Uh, winning that award, if that allows that to happen, then uh, that's a, for me, that's a, that's a success. Uh, but we're not going to uh, sit back and, and um, celebrate too long on those things. Uh, the work is there. Uh, there's too many veterans in need. There's too many veterans each and every day contemplating suicide. There's too many veterans living out of their car in fear of domestic situations and things like that that we have to address. Uh, and we got to get serious about as a nation. Uh, and I hope that um, you know people listening will uh, will go to their um, their their community leaders and to their their politicians and let's figure this out together uh, with other VSOs so that we can address this as a nation. I watched the video of them awarding you that Atlanta Braves Community <laughs> Heroes Award, and I really felt the enthusiasm and the true appreciation. So let's package that and, and bolster that up for you, for your motivation as you move forward and expand this platform. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Changemakers with Katie Gore. To find out more about Katie, go to quadel.com. That's Q-U-A-D-E-L.com. This has been a production of Forbes Books Radio.